Aber das hier ist Faith over fear. Finishing strong in faith. Faith over fear. It's very important. But you understand these things. Because this is a season where we are going to have to make a decision whether we're going to live by faith or we're going to live by fear. And so, transitions are never easy when you're transiting from one thing in life to another thing. It can come with so much, so much worry, and so much uncertainty, and so much panic. So how do you overcome that? The antidote for that is faith in God. And one thing you have to understand tonight, let, let me give you the story of Joshua. Can you turn with me to the book of Joshua chapter 1? Joshua chapter 1. Uh, I understand today there's no projection. We eh? just have to read. Joshua chapter 1. Now, let me give you a very brief story to this. Joshua is leading the children of Israel across the river Jordan into the promised land. And he has to fit the big shoes left by his predecessor Moses. And so much has happened. Try to put yourself in Joshua's uh, feet and shoes and realize this, that the, the whole of his generation has actually died in the wilderness. The only person he has left from his generation is Caleb. The rest, all of them, are dead in the wilderness under the judgment of God because of unbelief. Because they did not have faith in the midst of adversity to have faith over fear. And they spread that fear. That is what fear, fear does. It is contagious. And so they spread fear in the whole nation of Israel and that brought judgment upon them and all of them had to die in the wilderness. And so then from that generation, only two people crossing over and that is Joshua and Caleb. That is the only friend he has from his generation. He has to lead a brand new generation of Israelites across Jordan into the promised land. <laughs> the very land where the other ten had said that, hey, there are giants there. And so he has to lead these people across river Jordan. And the shoes he has to fit of Moses, they're very big. And definitely that is bound to bring a lot of fear in your heart because it's, it's transition. And this is what God speaks to him and says, read with me in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. This is God speaking to his servant Joshua. He says, have I not commanded you, Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So, Joshua, I am with you as your God, as your guide, as your help. I am with you. That is a guarantee. That is a promise, sure promise from God. But this is your responsibility. There is God's sovereignty and there is human responsibility. So, I am with you. But God's promises are conditional. Now the condition is this. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. The opposite of that is Joshua have faith. God is so. And guess what? God is not just good out there. He wants to be good to you. He's so good that the children of Israel, when they were so rebellious, actually Judah, when they were so rebellious, Jeremiah preached to them 42 years. That is a prophet who preached 40, the weeping prophet. He preached 42 years without a single convert. And all of them continued in lawlessness and rebellion against God until the judgment of God came upon them through the nation of Babylon and they all carried into exile, all of them, as judgment. And they get into exile, and guess what? God, because he's so good, he speaks to them in Jeremiah 29, 11. That scripture 
I know we memorize it and it's okay, it's fine, it's good. It was spoken in its context specifically to the exiles of Judah in Babylon who had been driven out of their own land because of their rebellion against God. And God says, hey, hey you are in Babylon, but I know the thoughts that I think we can learn to destroy you, but I brought you here so that I can break you before me, so you can come back to me and I'll be good to you. God is good. You know that tonight? That God is so good. Can you remember that? In a time of adversity, in the time when the enemy is murmuring discouragement at your ears and fear, can you remember that God is good and He will be good to you. He wants to be good to you. David writes in Psalm 27, in the scripture around verse 8, he says, I will have lost heart unless I will, be, I will have believed that I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Psalm 27. Verse 13. I will have lost heart unless I have believed that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He is good. And he wants to show you his goodness. And then you say, ah. <laughs> when I say that, and someone and in your mind, you say, okay, huh, I don't deserve it. Do you know that if you have to fast 120 days, you're still not deserve it. You're still not qualified anymore. It is God's goodness upon you that you don't deserve. It. And guess what? Paul writes and says, the goodness of God leads us to repentance. It draws us close to so the Lord is good. God is good. The second thing, three things actually. The second thing is God is great. Don't you remember that? that God is great. God is so great that scriptures in Psalms in so many places declare that the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He's great and greatly to be praised. Do you know the children of Israel just before they crossed the Red Sea? And did you know they actually crossed the Red Sea on dry land? Sometimes we think, oh, and they crossed the Red Sea. No, 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 it was on dry land. The center of Jordan, it was on the dry ground. That is how supernatural and miraculous it was. And when they get to the Red Sea, and they have the, the Red Sea before them, and the Egyptian army behind them, did you know that none of those people knew or had an idea of what God was about to do? None. Zero. Not even one. Moses had faith and he knew God somehow, somehow God will do something, but he had no idea what exactly God was going to do. Do you know when you see no way out? God sees a million ways out. Because he's God. When I see something. And that's why I just love you when they were singing the song. When our backs were against the wall and we knew it was over, that was the situation the children of Israel were in. They knew it was over. I mean, what do you have? I mean, the Egyptian army is behind us. The Red Sea is before us. It's over for us. Guess what? <laughs> God had a way out for them. Guess, it? Guess what it was? A supernatural way. But Isaiah will write, he makes a way in the sea and a path through mighty waters. That is what it is. And that is why for us to finish strong as jubilees. <laughs> in faith, we have to understand the greatness of our God. Isaiah will write and say, He brings out the host of heaven by number. He counts all the stars and names each one of them by name. Can you imagine that? Do you know this is, this is the solar galaxy, the one we are in, the one with the nine planets, Earth, Jupiter, and all this? This is the solar galaxy. And do you know there are other 100 billion galaxies out there? 
and each galaxy has trillions of stars. So can you do the math? A hundred billion galaxies times a trillion stars. How many of those? You can even fathom. And guess what? God knows them all. Listen, all of them by name, each one. Not even one is missing. Not one. He knows them all by name. Did you actually know this solar galaxy is one of the smallest galaxies? Of the hundred billion galaxies, this is one of the smallest. There are other bigger galaxies. That this planet Earth, I think, goes into the sun almost 300 times. This Earth, this planet, it was at the end of the two, 300 times. That is to show you how great our God is. And He will not be down to us in the New Testament and say, even the very hairs on your head are not. Who cares about you? Oh, I don't care about my hair. Yes. No, no. Let me, let me I don't care about my hair. I don't. How many of us have been in your life? You can be your life. You can be your life. You can be your life. Because it's precious to me. Do you? You don't. Because it's so. Now, if God will be so careful to number the many hairs on your head, do you know how many, on average, how many hairs a human being has on his head? On average? Huh? 100,000 hairs on your head. 100,000. How many people in the world today? Probably 7.5 billion. So 7.5 billion times 100,000 heads. And he knows all those. By number! So when you comb your hair in the morning, when you lose some hairs in your comb, he knows how many you've lost and how many are left in you. <laughs> <laughs> that is how great he is. Now, 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 listen carefully. If he cares so much about gods and stars, but you know one thing? He did not send his only begotten son to die for any single star. Zero. Nada, nada. He sent his only begotten son. All, all that he had was his son. <laughs> that is all that God had. All the other things were made in him and through him. So all he had was his son. The only begotten son of God that he gave all away for Yes, you. And because he is perfectly faithful whenever you go through a situation that scares you, that seeks to kill faith in you, this is what you should do. You owe God a response of faith, not of unbelief, not of doubt. You owe it. He deserves it. He deserves it because he's perfectly faithful. He deserves a response of faith in your time of adversity. Not fear. Not doubt. Not unbelief. So can we have faith and just finish strong in faith? Can we have faith over fear? Can we go out there and be so contentious with faith? and not fear. When everyone is negative and fearful and afraid and scared, can we step into that world with hearts full of faith in God? He's so Peter. Peter is about to go through a very tough time and Jesus prays for him, just, you know, in the run up to the, you know, crucifixion and all that drama. And Jesus says, hey, hey, Peter, Satan has asked for you, that he may sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. What did he pray for you? I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. If there's anything the enemy set up hunts in the heart of a believer, it's faith. Faith. That is what he hunts. If he can just squeeze faith out of you, then he knows he has you. And that is why Proverbs, I believe, 25 10, we'll check that later. It says, if you are, if you faint in the time of adversity, then your strength is small. <laughs> if you faint in the time of adversity, then your strength is small. 
Can you help us tonight for tonight? Wherever you are, whatever you're going through, can you help us for tonight? That we are going to strengthen the faith muscle. It's a muscle. It has to be worked for it to get stronger. You want to say something? <laughs> you know, a baby, before she can begin to, to walk, she, she, she tries to, uh, to stand. Do you know why, why Do you know the reason? It's because the muscles of the feet are not strong enough to support the body. So until that the muscles are strong enough to support you. Can we go and work on our faith muscle? We get it strong. Then she called, now this is Hagar, this is how she responds. Then she called the name of the, the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees. And that is what to bring to attention to Because you can leave this place, you're jubilant, you're clearing, and you go out there and you wonder, does God care about me getting a job, for example? Does God have an opportunity in mind for me? Does God have an opportunity for me? Or you're going through a situation, a need, a circumstance, I don't know what it is. And you're wondering if God truly cares, if God is really concerned. Especially in the moments where you feel you have sought Him so much. And you waited so long. And you wonder what way. And the enemy seems to tell you he's not concerned. He doesn't care. He doesn't make your case. If he did, why you still in that situation? If he did, why you still where you are? The testimony this young lady carried from that experience with God. She put up an altar and named the place the God who sees me. You are the God who sees me. Not the God who sees us. Not the God who sees the church. The God who sees me. It is Jehovah El Roy. Not Jehovah Roy. Not Jehovah Roy. Not Jehovah Roy is the Lord my shepherd. This is Jehovah El Roy. E L then hyphen R O I. E L hyphen R O I. Jehovah El Roy is the God who sees me. The God who is concerned about me. The Lord who cares about me. The Lord who has a plan for me. The Lord who will not leave me not to sin. That is Jehovah El Roy. So to finish strong in faith is to have faith in the supernatural of God. Not only that, but to expect that supernatural of God in your life. So then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, you are the God who sees. For she said, Have I also here seen him who sees me? Therefore, the well was called. Via Lahai Roy, observe. It is between Kaddish and Bered. The story continues. So the thing is this this is the God who sees me, the God who cares about me. <coughs> you know, I you see tonight, and I remember my year when I was in campus. We danced the kind of dance that they were doing. I did it, I did that dance, or we did our jubilant thing in Kenyatta University in the year 2008. Yes, I know you guys were in lower five or somewhere, I don't know. 2008. That is when I was doing my first thing. And <laughs> you guys make me. 
Leck mich jetzt noch wohl. Ich erinnere mich, wir klären sehr early, wir klären im April. Our services, our academic year used to run all universities by the UK. It was like, I think we were only six. I think Vasile Bolero was the newest, it was the baby. And also all, 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 all academic years used to run from September to December, that is first semester, and then January to April, second semester. And then all of us go on long vacation. In fact, September. That is how it was. We didn't have double intakes and all these things. Now, this is the thing. So I finished in April of 2008. And I decided, because I was in Nairobi and I had stayed in Nairobi for so long, and I decided, you know what? I'm not going to stay in Nairobi. I'm going back to Charlotte, to my rural club. Because I felt the Lord leading me to go and start here in my rural home church. <laughs> I feel led, so I went, and, and my family was asking, hey, you should stay in Nairobi, because if you go to stay there are no smartphones. If you are to access the internet, you are to go to a cyber cafe. So cyber cafes are not in the countryside, they are in towns. As I decided, no, I feel led of the Lord to come and serve the Lord in my home church. And I went home, and I served passionately. I remember I was literally in church almost every day. <laughs> For something, doing something, you know, doing something for the Lord. And it gets to September, they have done classification, and of course I get the classification, I have gotten the kind of the classification I desired, and I had sought the Lord about. Uh, and then in October, I get a call, because now we have to graduate in December. So I get a call from a friend who says, hey, by the way, can you send me your CV? So I did send the CV to him. And I get called for an interview. I've not even graduated. I only have a letter of completion. And so I go for an interview uh, in November. And I go for the second interview because I passed the first, the first phase of the interview. Then I go for the second interview. So by the time I was graduating in December, in January, I had been posted to Eldon to work with Paolo Bank. It was my first posting. I'm saying that to say this. I was actively serving the Lord and I was waiting on Him. Waiting on God is not a passive time, it's an active time. I served the Lord with all that I had while I was waiting for him. And in February, I was reporting to my first job. I'm saying that to say, to give this encouragement. The thing is this, God sees. It was not networks. Actually, the person who asked me to send my CV was not my friend, per se, not like close. He was my friend's friend. So he goes and he's like, hey, I am Moses, I'm, uh, uh, you know, we have a mutual friend, so it's like, hey, yes, I remember, yes, you're a meeting somewhere. Yeah, I need you to send me your CV. And then I said, hey, the short of the story is, hey, in February, I'm reporting to Eldoret, my first time. I don't meet Eldoret, my first time, I didn't know people. And I come, and here I am, from 2009 to 2022. Seeing God's faithfulness in this land of the living. <laughs> I'm saying that as an encouragement to someone. Hey, God has a plan for you. God has you in mind. Do you know what I missed? Do you know what just happened? Do you know just something, somebody out there in the body of Christ amongst so many billions of believers in the world today? Now you're very, very, very personal to God. Very specific to God. Can you have faith in Him? Can you have faith in God? Can you finish strong in faith in God? Not faith in your faith, but faith in God. Can you strengthen your faith muscle? Can you challenge yourself to believe God for the impossible and see the supernatural of God in your life?
And the songs we sang today, and I just hope you don't come and sing these songs for the sake of singing. I mean, these guys are in the spirit. I, I mean, umaminifu, unawesa, the songs we sang, can they truly minister to us? And can we mean what we sang with our hearts? I'm sharing with a friend of mine who was saying, some of these things have become so cliche in our lives as believers. We even talk about how we bless the Lord. Do you ever stop and wonder, hey, by the way, is he truly Lord of my life? Or am I still in control of my own life? So the songs we sang here, <laughs> I wish there was a second service where we do the old, all those songs <laughs> over here. But the songs that we sang in worship, in praise, those songs, can they mean something to us? Can we be challenged? Can we pursue these things? Can we stand these things? So that our lives are changed. And we see truly a move of God in our lives. Can we start to pray? Thank you. Uh, every eye closed, every head bowed, you know, the presence of God is here. I want to take a moment. I want to know whatever it is, the fear that is on your heart. Some of us, we fear bad things will happen to us. Some of us, we have so much fear about tomorrow. Can you surrender your unknown tomorrow to a known God? Can you lay down all those fears? Whatever it is that is scaring you, can you cast those burdens before God tonight? tonight? Can you surrender them all? Whatever it, is, whatever it is that causes you so, to be so scared and so afraid, can you Surrender to Father God, we thank you in this place. We bless your name. We bless your name because you lift heavy burdens of God. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, Father God. Because you're the God who cares about us. You love us and you care about each one of us. Oh so, Father God, tonight we lift up our hearts. We lift up our voices to the Almighty God. Oh, Father God. We call on you, we call on Jesus. We call on you, Father. We humble ourselves before you, Father. We lift up our hearts before you. Testament, 
the Gospels we read, Father God, you rebuke them. Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Oh, you of little faith. Father, may that not be our category. But Father, may we be found like the centurion of whom you said, such great faith I have not found in Israel. Father, may we raise our standard of faith in God. But Father, even when adversity comes, we will not faint because our strength is small, but we will be mighty and strong in God. Heavenly Father, we repent of our unbelief. We repent of our fear, our worry, our anxiety and panic and doubting. Forgive us, Lord. Help us believe in you. Expect supernatural from God in our lives and in our situations. And Father, help us to be men and women of faith. Father, we spread faith out there. We give you thanks tonight. We bless your name. And as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.